factors may be linked to the detection of archive mutations, such as viral load, viral decay, and sampling bias. The study shown here by De La Cruz was originally presented at CROI by researchers at Stanford University and then later published. This study found that the likelihood of detecting a resistance mutation in proviral DNA is better at higher viral loads. This study evaluated retention and decay of drug resistance mutations in proviral DNA among 28 trial participants who failed an efavirenz-based regimen due to emergence of K103N. These participants were subsequently treated with an effective suppressive protease inhibitor-based regimen and followed up for up to 10 years. PBMC samples obtained after suppression were analyzed for the presence of drug resistance mutations using a next generation sequencing platform. The results showed that at an NGS cutoff as low as 2%, K103N was retained in the proviral DNA of 71% of participants after suppression. In addition, redetection of K103N was about three times more likely for every tenfold increase in viral load at the time of efavirenz failure, thus demonstrating a positive association between plasma HIV RNA level at viral failure and detection of K103N in proviral DNA. Another recent study presented at AIDS 2020 also found that HIV-1 viral load may affect the probability of detecting drug resistance mutations in TBMC. This study investigated the concordance between HIV-1 genotypes among patients with paired plasma RNA and TBMC DNA drug resistance tests in addition to a viral load greater than 500 copies per ml. Among the findings was that the percentage of plasma virus drug resistance mutations detected in the TBMC compartment correlated with viral load at the time of resistance testing. This study also reported that HIV TBMC DNA captured a greater percentage of plasma virus drug resistance mutations in patients with viral loads greater than 10,000 copies per ml than in those with viral loads less than 10,000 copies per ml. Decay of proviral DNA due to natural cell turnover in a latent reservoir results in loss of drug resistance mutation. At ID Week 2020, Saranovich presented a study that evaluated the mutation redetection rate and concordance of HIV-1 DNA tests among patients having three separate HIV-1 DNA resistance tests along with corresponding viral load measurements. The tests were performed across an average of 100 weeks. The results demonstrated a significant negative correlation between redetection of drug resistance mutations and time between testing. The top figure demonstrates how, as a time interval between testing increased, the percentage of drug resistance mutations that were redetected decreased. And when time intervals were grouped, as shown on the lower graph, the average drug resistance mutation redetection rate was significantly lower if more than 24 months had elapsed between tests. Those mutations not detected had likely decayed over time to levels below the reporting threshold of the archive assay. This data demonstrates that viral decay due to reservoir dynamics, along with sampling bias, which we will discuss next in more detail, may affect drug resistance mutation redetection rate beyond 24 months of initial testing. Sampling bias due to founder effect likely pay, plays a major role in de detection of proviral DNA drug resistance mutations. Founder effect describes errors in identifying minor variants in a population due to population sampling. In the latent reservoir shown, wild type proviral DNA shown in gray makes up 75% of the total population and drug resistant proviral DNA shown in red, 25%. A sample drawn from this population would appropriately represent the diversity within this latent reservoir. In the next example, the representation of drug-resistant proviral DNA decreases because the total population size has decreased, even though the ratio of wild type to drug-resistant minor variant in the population is the same. Taken even one step further, 
The sample drawn from this last example with yet again the same ratio does not capture the minor variant at all because the population size is so small. The idea here is that as the amount of starting material decreases, the probability that an accurate representation of all variants within the population will be sampled also declines. This helps to explain how viral decay contributes to mutations not being reported. Unlike standard drug resistance assays where a minimum viral load has been established to ensure assay success and adequate representation of the viral population, our GenoShore Archive assay has no minimum sample requirement. Internal testing of samples used for our DNA assays has informed us that samples generally have a very low DNA copy number that is on average less than 100 copies per sample. Given the potentially low starting material, along with sampling bias, drug resistance mutations could be missed. However, knowing this caveat, and to address the effects of sampling bias, we have optimized the archive assay by pooling triplicate PCR amplifications prior to sequencing in order to maximize capture of viral templates. And so in summary, for patients that have been suppressed for many years, it may be more difficult to capture drug resistance mutations documented early in their treatment history, given the effect of viral decay and reduced number of available templates from which to sample. Next, Sharon Martins will discuss the type of information GenoShore Archive can provide for patients.